This piece is called Midnight and it is a funnel pour. Thank you for being here. My name is Holly and thanks for being here at my channel, The Morning Pour. Regardless of what time of the day, it actually is where you are. So this is a funnel pour and I'm using a little bit of this purple paint around the stem of the funnel. I did not have any more of my Prussian blue, which is what I used as my base coat. That is a Liquitex, a Liquitex color as the Prussian blue. I think that that violet color is that fluorescent violet by Blix, Dick Blix Acrylic. I forget the exact name of it, but you can find it easily on their website or probably in the store if you have one near you. That is 24 karat Extreme Sheen by Deco Art. The white is Artist Loft Flow White. And the other colors, honestly, I don't really recall. I'm sure that there's an Arteza color or two somewhere in the mix. I almost always use an Arteza color, at least one or two colors, within most of my paintings. And I do typically mix brands because that is one of the tricks of this trade of getting interactivity and cell formations without using silicones for example and there is no silicone usage within this painting in fact none of the paintings that i have posted to date on this channel have had silicone used in them i have used silicone in the past and i have not used it for quite some time i can't say that i will never use it again but i have been enjoying the results that i have been getting with just strategizing in my paint combinations. So I'm moving the funnel around in a zigzaggy motion just to attempt to get a nice flow of the paint on my canvas. I'm overall liking what I'm seeing here so far. There's a lot of cells, a lot of interactivity within the paint, and I'm happy with what I'm seeing at the moment. But of course, you never know what is going to happen with some of these paintings until you actually start tilting. And sometimes it gets better, sometimes it stays as nice as what I'm seeing right there, or sometimes it all goes crazy and awry and uh, modifications need to be made, to say the least. So here we're just torching to get out any air bubbles. If you have used silicone in any of your paints, then torching will bring up those cells because of the silicone being in it. If you are doing something strategically with Amsterdam paint, then sometimes the torch will also bring up lacing and small cell effects because of the properties of the Amsterdam paint. But I don't have Amsterdam paint in this particular configuration of paint palette mixes okay so what I did was I had turned off the camera because I scraped off a lot of the paint I was not happy with where that was going I turned it off believing that I was going to put down another base coat but if you look at all that dark blue area with all of those cells that are popping up within it that happened strictly from scraping yes so I turned the camera back on right away. I'm disappointed that I, I didn't realize that was going to be so epically awesome. Otherwise, I would have left it on. And I am rather than having to add more paint like I really thought was going to be what was going to happen here, I actually just have to restretch the paint that is left out. Because sometimes when I have had what seems like like epic disasters on my canvas and I have a lot of paint because I've tried to pour and then add more and then add more and it's still not looking right. Sometimes scraping can be the magic thing to really make a lot of beauty happen, a lot of cells come up, a lot of nice flows within the paint and it worked out well in this case. So I actually didn't have to get the funnel back out and more of those paints back out. I just had to stretch it out and then you could see I added a little more paint up in that upper corner to the right. So here I'm showing the footage just at two times the normal speed. The previous footage had been at four times the normal speed. And I'm taking this art stick and I'm just adding some little details 
dragging that dark Prussian blue in through that gold just to add some extra lines of interest. And here are the close-up shots. I love these. This is what the paint looks like uh, up close. There is so many beautiful things that have taken place, so many details, a lot of beautiful colors, a lot of beautiful flows. And up ahead, I have the displayed results. I actually like this piece better with the paint dry. Sometimes I do like the wet coloring better and pieces like that could be dealt with with a resin coating so that it brings it back to that vibrancy after it's dried and cured. And in some cases, I really, really love the coloring better once the paintings have dried. And this piece is definitely in that category. So hang tight for the displayed results because the coloring is dried and absolutely beautiful. Look at that. This is one that I would not touch with a gloss coat or a resin coating because I adore the coloring the way that it is just like this. Let me know in the comments below what you think and I thank you once again for being here at my channel. Remember to like and subscribe and click the bell. I look forward to seeing you at my channel again soon.